Okay. Okay. Let's um, let's pray, and uh, let me start. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for um, for all that you are to us, Lord. Father God, we thank you that you choose to that you choose to reveal yourself to us. Father God, we thank you for uh, for your redemptive nature and uh, and the very name, oh God, which are redemptive. And Lord, we thank you that uh, that according uh, to our needs, Lord, you choose to reveal yourself, Lord, uh, with, with your redemptive names, oh God, and your uh, character and nature, God, which are redemptive, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Um, you know, at this time, we just can't, you know, just focus on uh, you know the redemptive names of God, the way He introduces Himself um, through Scripture uh, and throughout Scripture. And uh, the way he introduces himself as Yahweh Shalom or you know, Yahweh Ire and uh, you know, Yahweh Sidkenu and, and so on, the way that he is, he is the provider, he's righteousness, he's the banner of victory, um, he is God, the sovereign Lord, and uh, and maybe we look at our own needs and just be fully confirmed fully fully assured and fully convinced that the reason he introduced himself in that manner is because he is well able to take care of that particular need right um so maybe there's a need in your life and uh, you can just look to god and say okay lord your life your character your nature the way you introduce yourself god I just want to take a hold of that and the reason you introduce yourself as Jehovah Shalom or Yahweh Shalom is because you are the God of peace and I thank you that I have access to that because you are dispensing that. It's your very nature to do that and so come and be my Shalom. Um, so we can invite God into that situation, into that need, and say, Lord, you be my Jehovah Shalom, God. You be my Jehovah Sidkenu, God. You be my Jehovah Nissi. Uh, because this is who you are. You know, he cannot be the one opposite of that. This is who he is. That's his nature, very nature. So we can invite him. Uh, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Awesome Lord, Sovereign Lord, Omnipotent God, Omniscient God. Lord, we just invite you this morning to step into our lives, to step into those situations, God. Oh God, where uh, sometimes we don't even know that there is that kind of a need, God, but I, I thank you that every need is, Lord, covered and fulfilled and by you, Master. So I just pray and we invite you, come, take over, come, step in, come and change. Hallelujah. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, okay. Welcome to those who tuned in late. Uh, welcome. So we have uh, today's speakers who are uh, Prabhakar Rao, J. Prabhakar Rao, and then after that, uh, Sri Kumar will share, and then after that, uh, Rupa. Oh, before that, uh, let me just share the feedback. Um, Mrs. Nalini shared the last class, last session, about being rooted and fruitful. Uh, from Jeremiah 17, uh, to, um, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man, uh, which means that you know he's reaping all those benefits. He's blessed. Um, because his trust is in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. And then we went on to see, uh, I think, four things. Uh, man is planted, he's protected, he is preserved and productive. I hope I didn't miss out anything. Right? Um, four things. So uh, very well explained, very well illustrated. Um, yeah. Um, and um, thank you. Really blessed um, by the message. Um, I just... Um, uh, this is just one thing, you know. Uh, so we very clearly explain the benefits uh, of you know, what is the outcome of such a man. So um, a good way to, you know, end it would be so, you know, therefore, continue to trust in the Lord and continue trusting. 
or continue to hope in the Lord and continue make the Lord your hope. You know, a kind of a invitation to do that uh, would sum it up really well. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, just wanted to invite, uh, yeah, uh, someone, someone say something. Okay. Okay, so uh, Prabhaka, um, if you're ready, would you like to share, please? Uh, yes, boss. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. So, uh, praise Lord, uh, dear pastor, and praise Lord, uh, dear fellow students. Uh, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, today, I'm going to present the sermon titled Ideal Sacrifice or Idol Sacrifice. And the topic consists presenting ourselves as wholesome sacrifice to God. Now, for a sacrifice, the definition of sacrifice uh, is like giving up something uh, that is most important or valuable to you in order to get something which is even more precious and important. Or in, in other words, we can say uh, the act of offering something to God or something to our beloved ones. Now, the word offering came subscribed. So to make an offering of the meaning of offering is to consecrate or present uh, to a way, uh, to a divinity by way of uh, propitiation or as a token of acknowledgement or to emolate on the altar of God in order to uh, atone for sin, to procure favor or uh, to express thankfulness. You now, so sacrifice uh, are of basically of two kinds. Uh, first is uh, non-bloody, like uh, unbloody, we can say, such as first fruits, tithes, uh, meat and drink offerings, incense uh, in the Old Testament base. <laughs> and the second one is, second type is the blood sacrifice, uh, which is, we can say, the burnt offerings, the peace offerings, the sin and trespass offerings, etc. So, so the question today arises is, uh, ideal sacrifice or idol sacrifice before we talk about our sacrifice to god i want to draw your attention towards the ideal sacrifice of christ for humanity through the will of god now the god the father first sacrificed for humanity his most cherishable uh, valuable son the only son the begotten son god sacrificed him for humanity for the sake of atonement of sins of the whole world as we can read this in the book of john chapter 3 verse 16 it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only one and only son or begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life we can read the word he gave he gave his uh, begotten son only son so that gave uh, that word means sacrifices only the most cherishable the most valuable and precious thing for god was jesus and he gave him for us now coming to the son's point of view the christ sacrifice for humanity god did his part by sending his son now christ did uh, as we read in the book of romans chapter 3 verse 24 25 26 uh, shortly, I'll read it for you. Like it says, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Um, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. So Christ sacrificed uh, by God, like Christ sacrificed himself to the will of God for the atonement of our sin through the shedding of his precious blood. And if we believe in him uh, as our savior, we receive it by faith. It also mentioned in the uh, first epistle of Peter chapter three verse 18, it says, for Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous in order to bring you to God. So there is no curtain now between God and us because the Christ cheered the curtain between God and us. Uh, by uh, by by shedding his blood, by he sacrificed his uh, young and holy life for us, for the righteous and for the un uh, unrighteous. So, another question arises: God sacrificed his only son, and sons sacrificed himself. 
for the atonement of our sin Uh, Prabhaka, I think uh, we just kind of lost you for a minute. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe um, maybe there's some bandwidth issue. Huh? I'm back, Pastor. Yeah, okay, okay, Hello. fine. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah. So the question arises: Is our ideal sacrifice? What should be our ideal sacrifice for God? God, Father and Son has given Himself. Now, in the Roman, uh, in the book of Roman, chapter twelve, verse one, it says: Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of the God's mercy. To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Here, the three points came into my mind. First is living sacrifice, second is holy sacrifice, and third, the sacrifice which is pleasing to God. And if we give these three uh, sacrifices, that would be our true and proper worship. Now, coming to the point, living sacrifice. Living sacrifice, I can say it is a loving sacrifice, as we can read in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 it says and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God you know the living sacrifice is the love of Christ who himself completely dedicated and completely sacrificed uh, and even shed his last drop of blood for our atonement of sin so that is the living sacrifice and the loving sacrifice. Uh, as mentioned in the Old Testament, Jesus is a burnt offering. Burnt offering is something we can, we can relate it to the living sacrifice. Leviticus chapter 1 verse 4, uh, chapter 6 verse 8 to 13 and chapter 8 verse 11 to, uh, 18 to 21 mentioned like earlier, a bull or ram or bird was accepted. It was a voluntary act of uh, worship or serve for atonement of unintentional sin in general. But the animal's death used to uh, offer as a sacrifice. Uh, in the New Testament, it typifies the death of Christ. And the bloodshed points to the atonement. And the smoke ascending typifies the resurrection of Christ. And the burnt sacrifice, we can call it as an ascending offering, uh, which is uh, which is called as hula, which means that means which ascends. Now, the point is Jesus fulfilled everything, the burnt offering under Levi, Levi's system, which was required to be. What are the points uh, that Jesus fulfilled to uh, submit himself as a living sacrifice? He was male, um, Leviticus 1.3, Matthew 1.21. He was without blemish. In Jesus was no sin. He knew no sin. He did not sin. He was without sin. He offered himself voluntarily and his offering was a substitution. Praise God. So in this way, we can say Jesus himself sacrificed living as a living sacrifice. So we have to be uh, act according to the love of Christ. And uh, we, if, we, if we offer ourselves completely to God, it would be a pleasing sacrifice. The second point is the uh, holy sacrifice. It mentions in the uh, first epistle of Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. It says, get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. This sacrifice focused on the perfection of God and adoration, devotion, commitment, and complete surrender to God. Uh, we has to be a new unleavened batch, so the old yeast of sin has to be removed from us, and we have to be uh, completely filled with the sincerity and truth and holiness of God, as God says, as Christ says, "Be holy as I am holy." So that would be holiness uh, is a sacrifice which. Christ want us to be. Uh, and the third point is um, acceptable uh, sacrifice. Uh, as it mentioned in the book of Peter, first epistle of Peter, uh, chapter 2, verse 5, it says, You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. As Apostle Paul says, we are the living stones and built together, built into a spiritual house and to be holy uh, priesthood 
and we have to continuously offering spiritual sacrifices which should be acceptable to god through jesus christ and in another verse it says in the book of hebrews uh, chapter 13 verse 15 and 16 it says through jesus therefore let us continually offer to god a sacrifice of praise mm -hmm. the fruit of lips that openly profess his name and do not forget to do good and to share with others uh, for such sacrifices god is pleased praise god so my dear uh, see my dear uh, brethren god is saying that we have to sacrifice uh, such sacrifices which is acceptable to god and that is that should do in a continual way it should not be a periodical way or once in a week or once in a while it should continually offer to god and that is the praise and fruit of our lips we should openly profess his name always uh, acknowledge his name always adore his name always worship him praise him wherever which your position we are in we have to confess that jesus is our salvation he uh, we have to accept that he is our master and we have to serve him through the uh, till the last breath of our lives now that is the acceptable sacrifice uh, to god no um, so these are the three sacrifices which god wants us to have living a uh, sacrifice a uh, holy sacrifice and uh, acceptable sacrifice so now the last point is idol sacrifice we have talked about ideal sacrifice now the idol sacrifice the meaning of idols means lazy unwanted half hearted and unacceptable so we can read this uh, in the example of cain's and abel's offering we can get the idea of ideal and idol sacrifice genesis chapter 4 3 verse 3 and 4 it says in the course of time cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering and abel also brought an offering fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock clearly mentioned cain brought some of the fruits which is which was unwanted half hearted unacceptable sacrifice to god but abel uh, bring the fat portions and the healthy portion the first born and the best uh, offerings to god uh, because he's the best and he deserves the best so i think uh, this is the way we should uh, uh, give all the glory and adoration to god by presenting our bodies wholesome sacrifice to god through a living loving and uh, acceptable way and thank you for listening this uh, sermon god bless you Praise. Amen. Thank you. Thanks so much, Prabhaka. Yeah, that was good. Praise God. Um, yeah, it was. A, it was a quite a good. I, I actually I wrote down the title as idle. You know, I D O L. I didn't. Uh, uh, only only towards the end when you explained uh, the word, uh, I got the uh, you know the meaning of it and I changed it. Yeah. So so ideal and idle. Okay. Right. So it was it was good, a very practical um, uh, you know explanation and quite an in depth one actually about sacrifices and the nature of sacrifice and and how Christ sacrificed himself and and so on. So uh, oh, beautifully explained and a lot of scripture. I think um, yeah. So maybe twelve minutes was not enough to you know go into all the scripture and and explain right. So uh, because uh, I think each one of those. scripture references are worth uh, going into and reading and uh, and really you know soaking in that word because the whole subject of sacrifice there's so much right to um, to understand uh, there's so much to um, uh, also you know there's some things that we can transfer there's some things which we cannot right for example um, the, the nature of christ sacrifice well he did it for us it's a substitutionary act and we just enjoy the benefits of it right there's no requirement of us to you know to uh, to go the same path to do that and uh, and we would be erring and uh, going into um, you know a kind of a performance or uh, are doing things in the flesh if we were to do the same thing right in our in our acceptance or towards acceptance so um, the the whole thing of sacrifice is uh, we are we were already been accepted been we have already received uh, so we just enjoy the blessings of it so that's uh, you know um, so, so so much to uh, uh, but still you know so much to learn the motive with which the sacrifice was done the way in which it was done so well, 
well, well, beautifully explained uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also about idle sacrifice. I, I guess, you know, spending more time would uh, really, uh, some practical things uh, also um, would have uh, uh, drawn out that aspect also, right? If you had uh, more time. Yeah. So I think Kennedy has a question. What is Hula? Uh, brother, I missed that. So, um, so Prabhaka was, uh, Prabhaka, you want to answer that question? Uh, Kennedy's question: What is hula? I think it was about sacrifice and uh, and the smoke rising up. You know that is what you refer to. But yeah, you can just go ahead and explain, yeah, please. Yes, Pastor, yes, Pastor. Thank you, thank you for the question, brother. Uh, uh, hula is the word that that is uh, that the meaning of burnt offering. If we if we uh, do like uh, earlier, it was a bull or a ram or bird which was uh, you know sacrificed for God, and when it was you know, uh, burned. So the, the smoke ascended and it was acceptable to God as an incense. So uh, it was the ascending offering or the burn offering is called as hula. And the exact meaning of hula is that which ascends. So we can say the incense uh, or the burnt offering. I hope you get the answer. Any feedback, anything from the class, anything that you'd like to share with Prabhaka, or maybe any questions that you um, might have? Um, okay, I have a question about Harrison. You could not register. Harrison, you can still do that. You can go ahead and uh, enter in that Google Sheet, and uh, I'll add you to the schedule. You can still do that, not a problem. Um, you could not register in the sense you were not able to you're not able to register is that what you're saying harrison yes yes i was not able uh, as in uh, you're not able to access the sheet yes i was not able to access the sheet oh is it okay um so if you go to classwork and uh, if you go down to uh, you know if you see that topic class activity you know there's a list there okay let me just show that to you um Mm, sorry. Just a minute. Okay, so you go to this section. Right? I don't know. Uh, this is what my screen looks like, but yours could be a little different. So you have the stream where you know the link is there. So then you have the class work. So under class activity, there is this list sermon topic, right? And uh, there's a Google Sheet listed there. So all you have to do is click on that, and it'll it it should take you to uh, the sheet here. Uh, are you able to see this? So yes. people, yeah. So that's it. So you just enter it here, and uh, you can yeah. Thirty names are already there. You can enter it here, and then you have the second tab, which is here, which gives you the schedule presentation schedule. So we have Prabhaka here who's just completed. So we have that. Right? So yeah, so you can check in your schedule next. So okay. Probably, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So okay, so who's next? Uh, next, we have um, Prabhaka Sri Kumar. Yeah, Sri Kumar, go ahead, please. Thank you, Pastor. Sorry, Shikma, your mic is muted. I don't know if you started already. No, sir. I'm just share, trying to share the. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. In the meantime, Rupa says that she will present next time. So, if anyone else is ready, you can do that. Uh, let's see if we have the time. Yeah. Uh, if anyone else is ready, you can present uh, in Rupa's place. Okay. Here's uh, Shri Kumar's presentation. Shrikumar, I think there's some issue. It's kind of, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, no, I think uh, you should avoid doing that. So this is OK. You may not be able to see the class, I think, if you make it full screen, but that's fine. Um, oops. OK. 
Okay, we'll just wait for Sri Kumar to come in. Okay, he's come back. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Hey, no worries, no worries. No problem. <laughs> Go ahead. Now is it audible? Yeah, it's fine. Perfect. Go ahead, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very good morning. Um, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today we, uh, today my topic is, uh, who are we in Christ? This is one of the important topic which I always felt that um, this thing, which um, it's not just a topic, it should be our identity, it should be our 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 image which we always carry in our life, because it is uh, it is something which is um, which is a um, sorry. It is something which we always sh should know. This is the re only reason God has sent Jesus in our life. God has sent Jesus in our life. The Bible, uh, through this message, through this message, I want to uh, I want to just present something very important. The expectation with this message is to we should know. Uh, I just want to know that uh, to inform um, to tell you that about the image in Christ, position in Christ, authority in Christ. The identity is our vital need. Our uh, in our day-to-day -day life, it's so important that how we should have the confidence on our identity. Many of us, uh, you know, we use our passport, we use our Aadhaar card or identity card, identity card to to get access uh, to our day-to-day -day needs. You know, and um, it it the identity should be uh, it should be given from the authority government authority, and um, you know, uh, it should be authorized from the government authority. It should not be a fake authority. If you have a fake authority, you may can you may face the consequences of that. You may be you may be legally you may face the consequences. But if you if you have the if you have the authenticate authority or the the true authority which is from the government, which proves that this is your name, this is your this is uh, this is who you are, you can get easily access into into the into any organization into if you want to uh, into if you want to travel to any town or a city. Like as I said that. It is a passport, it is an identity card, and uh, and uh, you know it's, it's a day to day life. Our Aadhaar card in for our college admission, for to take a telephone telephone uh, connection, you need the identity. You need this identity card. It is in the same way in our spiritual walk with Jesus. On the spiritual walk with Jesus, we need an identity. We need to know our identity, which comes from the government of the kingdom of God, which or the government of God. And it's very important. It's very important that this knowledge, this knowledge will keep you in a safe zone. This, this knowledge will always enable you to win over your enemy. Many of us are in a dangerous zone because even though we are going to church, we are going to, so we are doing so many things, but we lack this one thing that, who we are in Christ, who we are in Christ, who we are in Christ. The enemy take the advantage of the ignorance that who we are in Christ. If you don't, if you don't sure, if you are not sure about that, uh, who you are in Christ, you are in a dangerous zone. Enemy have an access. I want to take you to um, the Genesis chapter 3, 4, where it clearly says that the Satan tempted the woman and said that if you eat this fruit, you shall be as God, you shall be as God. If you, but if you read the Genesis chapter one twenty seven, the Bible very clearly says that God has created them in the image of God because of the ignorance of who they are in God. That was the reason which tempted them to fall into sin, which tempted them to eat the fruit, which was forbidden them to eat. Hallelujah. And this is the reason with even we believers also that we don't know who we are. And that's why we, we, we just mess up our life. And we just because of the lack of knowledge, because of the lack of the truth of this one thing that who we are in Christ, that 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 may that may bring problems in our life even if you read the luke chapter 4 3 the you know satan always tried to attack our identity even if you read how he how he how he tried to tempt jesus how sorry how you tempt to the adam and the woman the same way he tempted jesus also every time if you read luke chapter 4 3 that was his question that 
are you the son of god if you are the son of god then tell the stone command the stone to become bread hallelujah so jesus got the victory because he was knowing that who he is he was knowing that he is christ he is knowing that he is the son of god if you read luke 22:67 before his crucifixion the priest asked are you the christ are you the christ at the point of death at the point of death jesus was confident on his on his image on his identity yes i am the son of god i am the image of god i am the christ hallelujah many times when we go through the trials and the temptations we used to think that oh god you have you have forsaken me you have just left me no god has never we are connected with god and that confession should always be there in our mind in our spirit that our image is in god and god has a purpose in our life the i just want when before we came to christ we were in the image of adam and as an image of adam we were sinners what was our what was our condition what was our image in the isaiah chapter 59 2 separated from god we were separated from god if you read john chapter 8 34 we were slave to sin if you if you if you read ephesians chapter 2 12 says we lived without hope we were enmity with god according to romans 5 7 we were enmity with god we were destined to death that was our condition before we came to christ but once we came to christ our image in christ is changed identity changed we became a child of god not with the human will but this is the will of god hallelujah and we became the heir of god we became a new creation the righteousness of god was given unto us we became the temple of the holy spirit once we came to christ our image is changed our identity is changed hallelujah and the bible says our position changed we were once separated from god now we are seated with him ephesians chapter 2 6 says that we are seated with him we are one with him and colossians chapter 113 says we are delivered he delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom into his kingdom our position is shifted and the hebrew chapter 416 says we are having access to the throne of grace in the in the past as i said we were without god we were with we were we were we were separated from god but once we receive jesus as our savior our image and our position is changed we are having access to the throne of grace that's the bible says hallelujah now our relationship with christ because of the image of christ once we receive jesus our image is changed our position is changed our relationship with god is changed we are one with him in the spirit the bible says in the first corinthians chapter 617 says we are one with him in spirit colossians chapter 34 says Christ become our life hallelujah Christ become our life hallelujah once we were we were once once we were subject to death death was our our destiny but once we received Jesus as our savior as the brother prabhakar said he became a sacrifice for us and we received that sacrifice he became our life because of his death we received the life and we are we became one with him how we function with the how we become a steward in Christ Jesus see once we become once we have this identity it's not just to go into the church and coming back no we have to function in that in that identity we have we are called to be a, the steward in that in in that identity and we are called to function in faith we are called to function in faith it's not just once you receive jesus taking baptism you can live your life how you want no now we are connected now you are one with christ there is a function in faith there is a position god has given to us first position as per first peter 2:9 you are you you are called to function in faith as a royal priest and a peculiar people you are the master of the whole estate you operate as a son of god you are seated with christ and rule or you are like an overcome or over every circumstances you are not called to walk in timidity you are called to walk in boldness you are called to walk in strength to strength glory to glory because god says in the romans chapter 837 god has made you more than overcomer you are overcomer in every circumstances because you are one with christ jesus and you are a heir of god you are a heir of god you have the access to to 
to to enjoy every 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 glorious riches which god has kept for us hallelujah and the authority in christ the god has given us authority as i said we are having the function in christ when you are in function now you the authority in christ in our image now we are having the authority in christ what is that authority the bible says he has given us authority to trample on snakes and the scorpions to overcome all the power all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you this scripture i really like you know this prescription you always meditate when you obey always every day you meditate the scripture it always says that you can overcome all the power of the enemy there is none can overcome you when the god made you an overcome comer the authority which god has given to you it is from the kingdom it is from the government of god you can trample every plan of the devil every power of the scorpion every power of the snakes and nothing can harm you and matthew 28 16 20 says the, the god has given us the authority to baptize the people to preach the gospel make them the disciple this is too important authority which god has given to us when we know the true identity in christ jesus this is our authority and uh, the end i want to encourage you don't live like an ordinary christian live in christ know your identity you are use your use your position function in the function as a good steward and uh, use the full advantage what the god has given into your life thank you may god bless you thank you pastor thank you shrikma wow it was very nice <laughs> quite a fiery preaching and uh, uh, reiteration of the truth thank you so much wonderful thank wonderful you. such a blessing yeah um yeah so um image position authority function wow, all wonderful wonderful things and um, yeah for me a personal takeaway you know this uh, what you mentioned earlier on uh, i mean for me personally like uh, the authority authentic authority i think that was a good good uh, good phrase authentic authority something that's real genuine right it's not fake and authentic authority gives you access that's that's brilliant right uh, just like an id card if it's real if it's authentic it was uh, you know it gives you access to the god to give you uh, access to everything authority and influence and all that um, amazing right um yeah um i i kind of lost i i, I totally enjoyed the message so nothing you know there's not to point fingers but uh, i was just wondering about the um uh you know the arrangement of it so that is all that's just me my mind immediately goes okay what is the second thing what is the third thing so i was just trying to this thing but then uh, absolutely uh, no issues at all um uh, were you walking around and preaching or you sitting I, i could imagine you just walking around the room pacing around the room and uh, you know preaching uh, <laughs> sorry maybe we should cut you loose and let you do that <laughs> it's good um uh, it's like uh, you know it's like a powerful you know it's a rain of truth right um, and uh, that's what god's word god's truth does you know just um yeah so very very inspiring and uh, very nice uh, thank you um so of course again mindful of time and uh, and also arrangement so those are the two things that i would say which would make it even better um but it's like uh, i think something like td jakes you know you, sometimes you just lose the plot you know it's like okay but no 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 problem just keep going you know keep going preacher i'm just receiving the truth so it is like that so good wonderful thank you okay so uh you, we yeah um okay right nice okay so uh rupa is um uh, rupa says that she will do it next time so is there anyone else who uh wants to share um otherwise um like I, i really don't have anything else planned so if there's anyone else who would like to share that's fine otherwise i think we can close we have 10 more minutes left but we can we can wind up we can just um... so is there anyone who wants to share no okay maybe we can just um, play one preaching game okay 
so what i'll do is um, okay let's do this maybe we can just we can have time for two people uh, we have 10 minutes right so so just 5 minutes for each message okay so i'm just going to pick anyone randomly and i'm just going to give you, give you a scripture verse okay so you take 5 minutes maybe you can take a minute to read the scripture but you just start preaching off you know it's just like uh just off the bat right so you read the scripture and you just start preaching from it maybe you just read it to understand it maybe take a few seconds to do that but take 5 minutes to do that okay ready okay i can can i see some hands go up just to say that you're ready okay tarun is here shri kumar uh, mangi two hands have gone up <laughs> okay wonderful rupa's hand is also gone gone up okay so these are the three people we have <laughs> okay let's um, okay so what we can do is also okay prabhakar also okay uh, anyone wants to suggest a scripture okay a scripture verse just put it on the chat okay the first one that comes up uh, okay but we will also read it we will also read and see if it's you know kind of suitable so somebody can put a scripture just one verse okay uh, not uh, very <laughs> okay i was expecting john 316 okay so john 316 uh, tarun's hand is still up so i'll ask tarun to share okay tarun your time starts now uh, john 316 we like to share go ahead okay so uh, john 316 says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life now this is the core verse of uh, evangelizing and in fact uh, presenting jesus as the savior and it it is the love of christ uh, that is that is presented in one verse totally packed and straight to the point so it uh, the uh if if we read a verse um it, it says uh okay uh, i just wanted to read uh, the verses before uh, john 315 says that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life and uh, uh, verse 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved he who believes in him uh, is not condemned but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name on the of the only begotten son of christ uh, son son of god now uh, the uh, the entire gospel of john that has been presented is is a presentation of the love of christ and this is one of the core verses which helps us uh which which presents to a non believer uh, the love of christ uh so it, the the core of this message is the belief in the son of god so it's only through believing in him that we can uh, we can be uh, uh saved now um uh, i i just wanted to um think through a illustration now uh if if you if you generally uh, let, let's say uh, you you wanted to um, uh, you know have uh, make a make bird make a bird a friend of you so it's it's very difficult for uh, the bird to trust you because you you are so different uh, and you are so huge and uh, the way you move around and it's 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 so scary for a uh, for a simple bird but if the bird can actually understand and you know it, it's a it's a matter of trust and a matter of faith for the bird for for it to understand that it, you are okay okay so if if you become a bird for a for a minute you can always interact with the bird and uh, say that okay it's okay it's just me uh, even though i am big it is okay to interact with me uh, so it, it it it's an analogy like that you know god is so big in the old testament we know that uh, when god really appeared and he wanted to interact with people people actually run away and they say moses you go and uh, talk to god because god is so big but you know god sending his son is in is into the world 
and uh, allowing him to become human is is something like you know uh, a man becoming bird and interacting with the bird and telling the bird it's okay so you have the bird uh, you, you know there is a relationship that is established when you come into the same level there is a relationship that's established when you humble yourself into the same level and it's an it's an amazing expression of love because it's if i have to speak to my son i stoop down and sometimes i literally get onto the floor go to him face to face and i interact and that's exactly what the father is uh, doing here he has presented his love uh, through his son sending him uh, although there are so many other reasons like uh, he paying for the sins and the ultimate sacrifice if we take it as the expression of you know he humbling down uh, being so mighty we know that uh, it, it the god's love is an amazing love which is which could reach out to you uh, at whatever level you are in so that you you go get into the same level and understand him so uh, this verse actually packs up the entire message yeah. of the gospel in one yeah thank you thank you darren <laughs> that was wonderful good it was a completely different take from what one would expect <laughs> that was good uh, yeah about becoming the you know becoming reaching out to the one by uh, relating to that person and reaching out wow wonderful okay uh, next okay matthew 58 was there for a long time so i don't want to give the next person the benefit of that advantage of that okay so who's the next person uh, is it mangi okay we'll, we'll so you, can you put some other verse please uh, say maybe you can put another uh verse yes uh, we won't go with matthew 5 <laughs> okay we have genesis 11 okay mangi genesis 11 is mangi there yes sir okay go ahead <laughs> genesis 11 <laughs> okay it's preach fine it, preach it come on okay well thank you so much uh well tarun uh yeah it is a good verse but also hard to preach at same time Uh, Genesis 1:1 says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Now this is an interesting uh interesting verse in 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 the, the age we are living in because uh scientists argue that uh there was a big bang and there was the earth, the earth was created by chance and there's no way that was there was someone an intelligent being who designed and uh, ordained everything to happen and us as believers we believe that there is is a god there is one person who before and thought everything in his head, in his mind and through his word and through the power of the holy spirit he created heavens and the earth so I know this is a subject that can take 10 10 hours to explain but explaining it in 5 minutes it's it's a challenge to itself so let let let's begin um in the beginning the issue the issue that we 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 find and we we get as believers trying to to box god so trying to 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 imagine how god did it and if if we try to to think of the ways of, and how god made everything it to be impossible to come to conclusion so we must try to look things in god's own perspective he is like brother tharun said he is he is so big and we cannot try to think of him or we can we cannot imagine how big he is because we 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 are limited to our pers- perspective and our perspective of him so he gave us only this this word here in the beginning he created heaven and 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 and, and the earth so we must believe because he said 
his word is true and we believe in him so we must believe that he created the earth, heaven and the earth and he's he is the sustainers or, or sustainer of the heaven and, and, and the earth and as as believers we are give, he gave us this word his his word is bible so that we can understand him and there's no way to to beat in the bush or to go to the left or the right and trying to find answers that will, will prove will, will the answers that we don't have we can look at the dinosaurs we can look at at uh, fossils that said they are millions of years old but there's no evidence that suggests that those things are millions of, of years old but one thing we, we are sure of and one thing we know is that he he said that in the beginning god himself created heavens and the earth and we must rest assured and stand on that truth that he and he himself created it if we try to find answer outside we will only go astray unless if we find answers to support what he said and walk in obedience to his word amen thank you pastor <laughs> Okay, good effort, Maggie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, it's an interesting verse not to preach from in the beginning. So Bible just assumes that God created in the beginning, God created. So there was a beginning. And uh, actually, the Hebrew says in the eternal past, you know, God created and uh, yeah, good references for Christian apologetics. Absolutely. Yeah. So hey, thank you. Uh, it was fun. You guys have a great uh, weekend, and we'll catch up. Um, yeah, on Monday, right? Yeah. Okay. God bless. Bye bye. See. You. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Great. See you guys. Bye bye. God bless.